All new rules over the controversial practice of fracking, but are they enough? Last week, President Obama proposed national guidelines on fracking. The technique extracts natural gas from the earth by injecting fluid deep into the ground. The liquid mixture sometimes includes toxic chemicals that may make its way into water wells. So the Obama administration's rules require drilling companies to disclose what chemicals they're using and test wells to make sure they're not prone to leaking. Now, fracking companies say these rules are too restrictive, but fracking critics say they don't go far enough. In fact, they say it only applies to a very small percentage of natural gas supply in the nation. So is drinking water still on the verge of becoming hazardous as a result of fracking? To talk about what the frack is going on, Mike Ludwig, reporter for Truthout.org, joins us now. Welcome to the show, Mike. So new rules on fracking, a good star or too many holes to be effective? Well, these new rules coming in from the Obama administration only cover BLM land, which is the Bureau of Land Management, and uh, tribal lands. And that is where the federal government has uh, jurisdiction, but it only covers about 11% of our known gas reserves. So, you know, most of uh, the fracking operations in the country won't be covered by these rules. So um, what needs to happen now? Do they need to be expanded to cover some of the, this other land, or, or how do they fix this? Well, there's a patchwork of regulation state by state, and actually the industry prefers that. They don't want the federal government stepping in and making new regulations, uh, so they might have to follow you know, rules that might overlap. But, um, you know, we're waiting on federal regulation to go beyond this, and the EPA has been doing a study, but that won't be completed until the end of the year. So uh, in the cases where the regulations do apply, but it seems like, as you just said, they, they don't apply to a majority of, of fracking sites here in the U.S., what is the likelihood that even in, in these scenarios they'll be enforced? I think that the federal government can be enforcing these, but as far as, you know, one of the big provisions of these rules is a disclosure of the chemicals that uh, the companies put into the ground. Uh, the fracking industry has been trying to keep those chemicals, uh, some of them as trade secrets for years, but they won't have to disclose these chemicals until after they're done drilling. Um, and that's one big uh, hole in this, in this rule that, you know, people who want to test their water before the drilling to get a baseline or an idea of what was there before the drilling won't be able to do that. So it sounds like it'll be too late. The damage will be already done by the time people know what's, what kind of chemicals are in the water. The damage could already be done by then. It'd be harder to hold companies accountable if you don't have a baseline data on what was in your water before they started drilling. Now, on the other side there, the drilling companies say the rules go too far. And gas, it's touted as a great alternative to coal, which comes with its own environmental problems. So what do you say to that argument? Uh, natural gas can be cleaner than coal, but coal has also been regulated uh, much more extensively than natural gas. And also, uh, the Obama administration has actually been working pretty closely with the industry. Their new uh, interagency working group to come out with these rules got praise after praise from the industry uh, for doing this. So actually, yeah, of course they're going to say they don't want to be regulated, but so far I think that they're pretty happy with it. Now, Mike, uh, many people are concerned about fracking, including beer breweries. And here's one of the headlines. It says, fracking could poison your next beer. That's what it reads. Uh, the founder of the Brooklyn Brewery fears toxic chemicals are making their way into beverages. So if the possibility of poisoned water is enough to scare you, could avid beer drinkers push this fight over the edge? Well, as a beer drinker myself, I hope that I don't drink any poison beer, but I think it might take, uh, <laughs> it might take a bit more from the environmental movement than uh, just microbrew fans. All right. Well, I guess um, anybody to stand by the cause. Um, so uh, what are you hoping happens next? Um, what needs to be done in order to strengthen these rules that you say right now are, are inadequate as they stand? The EPA has been conducting a study on fracking for the past about two years, and that won't be done until the end of the year. And they've been commissioned by Congress to do this, and the hope is that after they're done, they'll come out with their own regulation. But that process is taking a very long time. And I think that for activists, it's time to look at the state level. States have a lot more power in regulating fracking at this point, so it's time to push your local and state legislators to uh, take that kind of action. All right, Mike. Thank you very much for coming on the show. That was Mike Ludwig. Thank you. He's a reporter for Truthout dot org.